This is Rock and Roll English. Real people, real English. Here's your host, Martin Johnston. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Rock and Roll English. Episode number 309, baby. Oh yeah. And we have an incredibly special episode today because we have a new member to the R&R English team. Okay, if you're asking what is the R&R English team, it's me, Corporal Coma, the Hellraiser, Boom Boom Cannon, etc, etc. And now we have a new member, a new friend of mine. Well, it's not a new friend. We have been friends since 2004, actually, because we met at university, at Reading University, if anyone's interested. And her name is Champagne Shah. Now, I don't think that's the name you will find on her birth certificate. But anyway, you will hear the explanation of why she is called Champagne Shah later in the episode. So like always, I am here to remind you, if you have difficulty understanding any of this, remember to check out my course, Jungle Listening, the only course on the market that breaks down fast spoken English and turns it into clear comprehension. So if you would like to find out more, click the link in the podcast you are listening to now. If not, sit back and enjoy the conversation. Happy listening. Champagne Shah, how are you today? Hello, I'm good, thanks. How are you? Always fantastic, Shah. Always fantastic. Even more fantastic, you are here with us. I was so pleased when you said you would join the R&R team, okay? And you've even got a fantastic name, Champagne Shah. I thought just for your love, certainly how I remember you anyway, from our time at university together, your love of drinking. I must admit, I never saw you drinking champagne because we were too poor to drink champagne, but certainly a love of drinking back in the day, hey? Absolutely. As I say, definitely not much of a champagne drinker, but the Prosecco will do. (laughs) Similar vibe, isn't it? Yes. The name is classier than the actual person, but we'll go with it. Exactly. Let's go with it. So obviously, this is your first time on Rock and Roll English. Do you know how we start the show? Have you ever listened to a show? I have listened, but I have to say it's been a while, I'm afraid. Um, I don't have much time for... um, For me, for me. Yeah, for you. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, that's fine. That's totally fine. So, but from your listen, I still, I'm a little bit, I still think that you're just saying that to make me feel happy. Um, So we start the show with a review, okay? And so my next question to guests is always, do you think we have a review? A review of... A review of what? Of, of the podcast. Sorry, I should have been oh, more specific. sorry. People leave... Yeah, sorry. No, this is my fault. Yes. Okay, you, you do, yeah. Yes, of course. I've read reviews. Okay, no, because we often don't have reviews for the podcast. This is my way of giving people an incentive to leave a review. The listeners, yeah? Let's break it down. The listeners leave reviews right. for the podcast. My question to you, yes. do you think the listeners have left the podcast? Um, left the podcast, left a review. Well, I hope so. Now, that's the perfect answer. Now, luckily, you are in luck because we do have one, okay? And it is from Matteo. I saw this is from June 2022. I hadn't seen this one. An iTunes review, the best one. And it says, in order to improve my listening, I'd us- I had usually listened to the news, but I didn't see any significant on- improvement. On the other hand, after hours and hours of rock and roll English, I've realized I'm able to watch a TV series in English without subtitles. What a surprise. I have so much fun. I didn't realize I was improving my English. Totally recommend it. Boom shakalaka. What a review that was. What a review. I often have to have subtitles on. (laughs) (laughs) Really, do do they not annoy you? If there's one thing I hate, it's bloody subtitles. I mean, it's probably age, isn't it? But as I've got older, um, I much prefer having them on more the American TV shows. Oh, yeah, those Americans. And I remember your 
was it Jungle English you were talking about the other day about yeah. the speed at which they talk as well. Yeah. And I think it's dialect as opposed to language that I struggle with. Another reason why everyone should take my jungle listening course. Hey, Sha, I didn't even tell her to say that. Like, I didn't even know that she knew about that course. So, I don't know much about reviews, but I do follow you on Instagram. Right. Okay. Excellent. Well, thanks for that, Sha. So, okay. So when I was thinking of a podcast topic, because in our, I was going to say SMS text message exchange, but it was actually WhatsApp, isn't it? Because we have moved on yes, now. Yes, we are um, more than you, 12. Yeah, exactly. You said to me, you don't know how boring I've become. And I kind of thought, (laughs) yeah, same as me. So then you gave me a great idea. So I put into Google, you know, you're old and boring when and I got a list and I thought we could just have a look at these and discuss them, see your feelings on them. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Okay, so obviously, you know, you're old and boring when the thought of a night out fills you with terror is that the case for you champagne char far too often yes I like to plan it in advance and build myself up for it and then on the day I'm thinking how can I cancel this what can I honestly get away with as a reason not to go that is really interesting because one of the things on my list is when friends cancel plans you had with them you do a secret dance yeah. To be fair, I don't often cancel. I normally go and then half an hour in, I'm like, I'm really glad I did this. Mm. But no, when others cancel, I'm secretly quite pleased. Uh, again, I'm I'm the same. I, yeah, I'm not a canceller. I'm not sure if that's a word, but I don't like to cancel. I don't like to let other people down. I'll go. I don't want to go, but I, I will go. And I, unlike you, after half hour, I'm thinking fucking hell what am I doing here why what was I thinking my my main thing is thinking how am I going to stay awake past like 10 p.m yes that's my main fear definitely I went out on Saturday night um and at about 10 30 it was all right time to time to call it one did we no we ended up in mm. a burlesque cabaret bar till 2 a.m Oh, wow. Wowzers. Oh, I'm still recovering. Actually, no, not anymore. To be fair, I'm okay now. But by Tuesday, I was still tired. I mean, that that's a proper, that's as the as we say in the UK, going out, out. That was isn't it? out, out. <laughs> when, when you <laughs> end up in, what was it? Something calibre? Uh, burlesque ca- uh, cabaret. Bar. Right. Okay. I mean that that is a bit sort of sophisticated for me. I'm. Oh, it wasn't. Sort of... <laughs> it really wasn't <laughs> at all. Yeah, I I haven't been out out in quite a while. But even just going to the pub and for a few, and then obviously two small children at home. I, every drink that every bit of alcohol into my body, I'm just thinking, oh, I'm going to regret this tomorrow when they're jumping on me at six o'clock in the morning. Yeah, it's the it's not the night so much that is the problem, is it? It's the following day when you have to be reasonably well <laughs> presented for children mm. or exactly work. you have to be a parent. And <laughs> yes. That's that's the worst bit. Yeah. Um, okay, so the next one. So it says you'd rather see your parents than friends on a Saturday night. What are your thoughts on this? Um. Well, my parents live quite far away, so I think. Yes, a lot of the time I would rather see them. See, see, I I don't want to see anyone on a Saturday <laughs> night, e- e- even my wife, even Mrs. R&R. I, 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 by the way, yeah, I f- forgot about this to, to tell you, Shah, um, sorry, Champagne Shah, that obviously you're a respectable woman, you're married. So when we refer to our partners, your husband is Mr. Champagne Shah, okay? Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I like I said I I really don't like talking to anyone on Saturday night and just my my thoughts in general now is when the children sleep I just want to sleep as well because I think I might not be able to sleep later so yes I don't want to talk to anyone on a Saturday night See I think you I'm out the other side of that now So mm. um my little boy is 8 years old and um he doesn't want to spend time with me 
<laughs> he doesn't want much of my attention. <laughs> so on a Saturday night, I'll often say to him, come on, let's, let's have a late night. You can stay up late and we'll watch a film. We'll get half an hour in and he'll say, can I just go upstairs now? Do I have to stay here mm. with you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, so obviously my eldest daughter's only two and a half. And yeah, we've tried a few films like tried like a few like Disney films like ones that maybe we watched when we were young but like you say after like 20 30 minutes she just she can't be bothered at all and I'm, I'm saying look I'm just fucking getting into this like can we just I'm just getting into this it's a bit of Lion King come on yeah um, I did watch but, the end of the um, new Mario movie on my own because I wanted <laughs> to know what happened <laughs> wow i didn't even know there was a new so we're talking super mario yes. like super mario brother luigi he's a plumber yes I believe. that's the one god how did i not know there was a bloody super mario film that'll be this saturday won't it uh, oh yeah yeah but i i wish anyway <laughs> watching films is is i can't, I can't even remember what what they are to be honest like I said, I, I, I sometimes get like 30 minutes in. I also didn't realise how scary some of them are. So we were watching The Little Mermaid the <gasps> other day. Yes. And because like my daughter is quite, gets quite scared Aww. of anything. And then there's the bit of like that, the, the scary one. Uh, and then she was correct. Okay, and then she was crying, and and oh. I was starting to think I'm I'm fucking scared as well here now. I was shitting my pants with the little, <laughs> the little Mermaid. The one that scares me is um, the witches, Rodal's witches. Right when they okay. get turned into mice. Oh, I don't like that one at all. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I didn't realise how scary these things are. Um, okay, so another one we've got here. You know you're old and boring when the amount of people you can call friends has vastly diminished in the last few years. Is this true for you? <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> yeah, see, I, so I, I was thinking about this. And, yeah, the amount I see friends, mm. but I even I even think sort of years ago, I, I didn't have many. And they're the, still the same ones, the same ones I had at school. And then you were one of the few people... I made friends with at university show. I think I made like seven yes. like good friends at university who I'm still in contact with. And and that's about it. I just think maybe I was a bit of a loser back in the day and, and didn't have many friends. I don't know because you always had a really good friendship group from home, didn't you? And mm. you have all been best men for each other. Lots of people still on still on the podcast now. Yes, yeah. yes. Um and I don't know. I didn't have that growing up. I've still got I've still got friends from school, primary school and secondary school, but I don't have a group like I have individual sets of friends. You should just bring them together, Sean, oh, well, make a group. That would be so much like, easier, <laughs> wouldn't it? Because said, look, I've got five single friends. <laughs> we could easily make a, a group here. <laughs> we should. But then it's yeah, that's five different Saturdays isn't it and following on from oh, previously <laughs> not wanting to socialize on a Saturday it's harder and harder to meet up and see each other yeah yeah that's why with my group of friends we see each other like once a year uh, <laughs> it's perfect I mean in fairness everyone lives in like different countries and things but once a year perfect absolutely perfect um, so, okay, another one here. It says your WhatsApp profile picture hasn't changed in the last two years. How about are you a profile pic changer on WhatsApp, Sean? Well, you know how good I am with technology. Um, I... Well, as, as I said, I was surprised that <laughs> because clarification, Charlie, who you know as well from our time at university, and I've got no problem mentioning this, if clarification, Charlie is listening, she will back me up. Her technology skills are embarrassing so you you managed to put in like headphones i i was impressed i didn't have the microphone working though did i <laughs> never mind um no i recently learned how to change my whatsapp oh, profile picture so it has been changed a few times in the last six months but before right. that i think probably how old is whatsapp <laughs> About, I, 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 yeah i don't know i don't think it had been changed since i set it up yeah, no, I, I'm I'm the same. I like to have just one picture. And so I've, I had this even before I met Mrs. R&R. &R, and she did put me under pressure once and say, look, 
like the worst is when maybe we're in a WhatsApp group with some of my friends like from home and they've got pictures of like their wives together, oh. like them and their wife. And she says to me, she said, look, why don't you have a picture of us? <laughs> so I was like, oh. so I did, I did change it for about a week, but it just felt, it felt so wrong. Yeah. So I just had to change it back to my cartoon picture. Um, my, husband is even worse than me in fact as a Tottenham Hotspurs fan his profile picture is still Gareth Bale oh wow okay so yeah big player for Tottenham if people don't know Gareth Bale oh wow I mean (laughs) he also left Tottenham (laughs) 10 years ago yes so (laughs) right okay wow so uh, another one we've got here I, I must admit I laughed at this one I felt So, you know, you're old and boring when you feel shocked when you realize that people born after the year 2000 are old enough to buy alcohol. I I am still shocked at that, that people (laughs) that were born after 2000 are adults. Yes, that doesn't seem right, does it? No, um, it, because it because obviously we're actually exactly the same age, aren't we, Charles? We just got we a few are. days, few days yes. between us, haven't we? We have. Um, if I'm not mistaken, your birthday is the tenth of November, yeah? Well remembered. I'm going with the thirteenth. Oh, boom shakalaka. Fourteenth. No, you got it. You got it. Yeah, stick with the first one, Charles. Okay. That was the good one. <laughs> <laughs> I remember though, for years I was convinced it was the eleventh your birthday, and I, I was thinking of te- telling you just to change it because every year I would send you a message on the eleventh, and you would say, "No, it was yesterday." But then in the end, I, I got it. You have to thank Facebook for that, don't you? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, we even celebrated our twenty-first together, didn't we? We did. Yes. Twenty-first birthday had a mental party. That now that was like going out out. That was, that was, there were about seven of us with birthdays, weren't there? Yeah, exactly. And had an absolutely mad, because in England, in my experience of the world is England and Italy, but in England, 21 is quite an important birthday, isn't it? Whilst certainly here in Italy, it doesn't, it's not important at all. No, no. There's probably some historical reason, isn't there? But 18 seems I, a bigger one. Yeah, the bigger one now, yeah. Um, and that's the only time I've actually ever done anything for my birthday because I, I don't like being the centre of attention. No. Even now, Mrs. R&R has asked me, I mean, it's even horrible to be asked this, but next year, what do you want to do for your 40th? I, don't know, I just, just, just wanted to vomit as soon as I heard it. <laughs> I was about to ask you, <laughs> next year is another big one. We, we should have another party show. <gasps> let's do it. <laughs> let's, let, let's do it. Let's get everyone back involved and have an absolutely mental night out. <laughs> back in Reading? Yeah, exactly. Probably I would actually just do nothing. I, I often have mentioned that my 30th birthday is when I just moved to Sicily. Okay. And I I was working in this like Italian law firm and I hadn't been there long. So I didn't tell anyone it was my birthday. And it happened to be someone else's birthday on the same day who was like 47. So I found myself on my 30th birthday alone singing happy birthday to someone else. <laughs> Did you fess up? Did I what? Sorry. Did you fess up? Shy, your your slang's too <laughs> confess. Too great. <laughs> confess, fess up. Wow, is that what the kids are saying today? Is that did you learn that from your son who's eight now? No, he's probably like down with like slang. Um, you're making me feel really old now. I think that's something I used to say at school. Oh right, wow, okay. Well, you grew up in London though, so obviously. I did not far from me but I think you're in fact okay one of only two people I know actually grew up in London because it's very rare you meet someone actually that grew up in London but so that's that's a big thing especially for people in other countries like oh my god London wow so that immediately has just increased your credibility (laughs) your street your street cred why thank you Uh, I will only say good things about it (laughs) (laughs) Um, but in answer to your question about whether I fessed up um I didn't but then this was when I deleted my birthday on Facebook and then I think it may have actually been you Shah this may have been your fault you then obviously remembered it was my birthday and some people started writing on my wall on Facebook and then the people in the office saw this and then said oh is it your birthday as well so it's even more embarrassing because then later I had to say uh 
Yeah. And then they were like, everyone felt really bad and was like, you sort of, you know, <laughs> tapping me on the shoulder. Like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize. Otherwise, we would have got you a cake as well. I was like, head down. Like, yeah, it's okay. I'm okay. It's fine. I don't have any friends here. It's fine. <laughs> exactly. As I mentioned, I, I didn't have friends a long time ago either. So, um, so, so no, nothing's changed there. Um, okay. So what about this one? Your neighbors are having a loud party. And you contemplate calling the police. Does this ever happen to you? You, you live in a, a, you've moved away from London now, in a quieter place. Do you have any of these parties? Um, no, luckily. I don't think I'd ever call the police. That's a little bit extreme, <laughs> isn't it? You've got to carry on living there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I, I do get frustrated sometimes and try and remind myself that I've been there and I've done that before oh, that's what i say yeah. exactly we've all been there haven't we, we have. my neighbors actually a few months ago they got a knock at the door and you know it's always strange when you get a knock at the door so like, who the fuck is knocking on my door without telling me they're coming around that and it was one of the girls from next door who's only 17 she was having a party and she said just to let you know i'm having oh. a party today so i was like yeah don't don't worry and obviously i, I was in bed and then i could hear I, I could hear when it kicked off, let's say. <laughs> and then I could hear some drunk 17-year-old boy go, I'm going to fucking kill him. Oh, classy. <laughs> oh, really classy. And then I could hear some girls say, leave him, he's not worth it. <laughs> uh, I love was, the Chelmsford accent there, but... <laughs> yeah, is that like that F, the, the F, the F there on the worth it? It's not worth it. Uh, but yeah I, and I was loving it I in fact I could hear it was in the garden and I was thinking should I put my head out the window just so I can see what's going on I want to get involved <laughs> it, it, it sounded absolutely brilliant I was loving it and then when I saw her the next day it was brilliant I said oh, good good party enjoy it and then she just sort of went yeah yeah it was good it's good it was good <laughs> were her parents really away good. um I'm not sure actually I would I would imagine so I, I don't know um, but I, did, I didn't want to sort of, you know, grass her up and, and tell on no. her when I, when I saw the parents. So I, I, I just kept it to myself. Did you have any uh, parties as a 17-year-old when your parents were not there? So I would say gatherings. <laughs> and w I didn't have enough friends for a party. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> okay, so we are going to stop the conversation there. As always, I lost track of time so this conversation will continue in the R&R &R English family membership area if you are interested in joining that where you get access to more than 1,000 episodes yes that's right more than 1,000 extra episodes of Rock and Roll English stop the podcast now and click the link in the description to the podcast so let's have a look at some vocabulary that we heard on today's pod. So Champagne Shah said Prosecco will do. So that's a great term, will do. Like Prosecco is enough. I don't need champagne. Prosecco will do. It's okay. And she said the name Champagne Shah is classier than the person, like who she is, but we'll go with it. We will go with it. So let's just say, yeah, that's fine. And let's just crack on with this pod. So when we were talking about the review, I said, you are in luck. We do have a review. So a lovely term. You are in luck. It's your lucky day, let's say. She also told us when she went out, it got to 10.30 and she said, it's time to call it one. The full term, I suppose, is call it a day. So enough to say, that's that's it. We've done enough. Let's go home to call it a day. Let's stop. We spoke about going out, out, a very important term if you live in the UK. That means when you end up at two o'clock in the morning in some rubbish nightclub, that is going out, out. We spoke about street cred, so your credibility on the streets, let's say. Some more informal terms when I said at the party, when it kicked off. So when so when things kick off, it normally involves like the things start getting really serious, often involves fights as well. So that is kicking off. But I said I didn't want to grass this girl up. So to grass someone up means to tell on them. So like to tell the teacher what the person did wrong when she wasn't in the room. That is grassing someone up. 
And that's all of the vocabulary we have for today. So remember, if you want to listen to the rest of the episode and a thousand extra episodes, click on the link to join the Rock and Roll English family membership area. If not, I will see you again next week for another podcast. But in the meantime, just keep on rocking, baby. Thanks so much for listening to Rock and Roll English. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit rockandrollenglish.com and facebook.com slash rockandrollenglish. We'll catch you next time.